surface will be there plank surface will be there or at least similar surface will be there okay if you understand single point turning tool in detail so it can be extended to a multiple uh, multi point cutting tool so under that we have seen various features of the cutting tool and of course there are some systems tool in hand system then we have seen the asa system and ors systems okay, they come under and of course the asa system comes under the machine reference system and the tool reference system we have ors and the nrs and of course after that we have seen the mrs maximum okay rake system and minimum clearance angle also those things we have seen and we have also seen the conversion of angles from asa to ors and ors to asa so and uh, we have seen few problems numerical problems related to the tool geometry that is what we have discussed so far now once you understand the features of the cutting tool now next up is you should understand what is happening during machining that means uh, first basic thing is how the chip is getting formed okay and what are the types of chips under what condition a particular chip is formed so those things we have to understand so that is nothing but the mechanism of machining mechanism okay so how the machining is taking place so let us try to understand that So mechanism of machining or chip formation both are uh, almost same so during machining uh, all of you imagine the uh, turning process only so when the cutting tool is interacting with the workpiece it will compress the material okay ahead of the tool tip whenever you are inserting the cutting tool so the material in front of the tool tip will be compressed first okay initially it will be compressed and material will be converted to plastic form okay it will be plastically deformed then shearing action takes place so due to shearing action the material will be removed in the form of chip from the workpiece material okay so these are the steps so initially tool tip will compress the material so due to high compression uh, compression and uh, compression pressure some stress will be formed just ahead of the tool tip okay within the workpiece material so it will be plastically deformed and it will gradually uh, come like slice okay that is shearing action due to shearing action it will come like a slice or a thin okay peeling action will take place uh, a chip will come out so in that way we are removing the material from the workpiece now why do we need to study the chip okay there are various types of chips formed during machining process so if you understand the chip for example okay there will be some small chips or sometimes you will get very long chip single chip okay continuous the chip that is called continuous chip <clears throat> sometimes you will get some serrated chip so if you observe the chip uh, okay or if you study the chip its dimensions and its uh, appearance then you can understand the 
machining process okay will uh, give you the hints about the workpiece characteristics and the amount of force that uh, that is required during machining process okay all these things can be understood by studying the chips and of course same thing is given here first point is and of course uh, it will give direct or indirect information direct means in the some quantitative form indirect means some qualitative form so first point is nature and behavior of the workpiece material under machining condition if you observe the chip so based on the chip okay geometry you can comment on the workpiece characteristic whether it is ductile material or brittle material that can be told and the second is specific energy requirement so here specific energy in case of machining refers to the amount of energy required to remove unit volume of work material so that is joule per mm cube understood so if you want to remove some okay unit volume that is 1 mm cube material how much energy is required so that is a specific energy so that can be understood okay you may not get it directly by studying the okay amount of specific energy you will not get but you can understand that whether specific energy is requirement is high or low like that okay so next is nature and degree of interaction at the chip tool interface whether the chip is smoothly flowing on the cutting tool or whether there is high friction between the chip surface and the rake surface of the cutting tool that can be understood by studying the chips okay now different factors influencing the chip formation so as i told you chips have many forms okay one is a discontinuous chip the other one is continuous chip and continuous chip with built up edges one and the serrated chip okay we'll study the different types of chips a little bit later in today's class only so uh, okay what conditions uh, are uh, okay encouraging the formation of the continuous chip under what conditions the discontinuous chip will form like that we will we'll see so first is the form of machine chips depend mainly upon work material work material means whether the work piece is hard is it brittle or is it ductile okay, such kind of uh, things will influence the formation of chips if the work piece is ductile you will get one particular type of chip it is continuous chip but we will talk about that uh, a little bit later so if the work piece is brittle then you will get the discontinuous chips so based on the nature of work piece you will get the form of chips that is the first point second is material and geometry of the cutting tool so based on the cutting tool material cutting tool geometry so type of chip formed will vary okay if the rake angle is high you will get one kind of chip if the rake angle is less you will get another kind of chip so if the tool is a carbide tool you may get one kind of uh, chip and if it is hss you may get another type of chip like that so the material and geometry of the cutting tool they influence the form of chip that you are getting and process parameters so process parameters generally if you talk about turning process it is all about speed feed depth of cut so if you are running the machine at high speeds what is the type of chip if you are running at low speed 
what will happen similarly if the feed is high what is the type of chip the feed is less what is happening depth of cut is high depth of cut is low okay so what type of chips exactly you will get when you are operating at high speeds okay those things we'll see later so you have to understand there are process parameters that are influencing the chip formation now what are those process parameters speed feed depth of cut okay in general there can be more than those three but these are the main three parameters now the next is machining environment or cutting fluid so under which environment are uh, okay you are do, okay doing the machining process if it is a dry machining okay for the same work piece material and tool combination you may get one kind of chip if you are using a cutting fluid you may get another type of chip for the same work piece and tool combinations okay yeah somebody has uh, unmuted himself is mute okay and so the type of environment again whether you are uh, using any cryogenic environment or uh, okay whether you are doing any preheating of the workpiece material before machining so those things okay come under the environment cutting fluid application or not and uh, okay if you are not applying the cutting fluid and uh, the type of applying the cutting fluid will also vary so you can go for flood cooling you can go for jet cooling or mist cooling different types are there so based on the type of cooling and type of cutting fluid that you are using type of environment like cryogenic okay, that means you are cooling the work piece below the okay, zero degree or okay at uh, minus degrees and if you are heating the work piece what will happen or if you are treating the cutting tool before cutting what will happen so all these factors influence the formation of chips now this is very important there are two types of cutting processes okay we can categorize the cutting process into these two orthogonal cutting and the next is oblique cutting now what is the difference between these two let us see so this figure here is showing an example uh, this is for orthogonal cutting so the main thing is in orthogonal cutting cutting edge is perpendicular to the cutting velocity now what is cutting edge here if you see this is a tool so cutting velocity is in this direction okay that means work piece is moving in this direction relative to the tool so these two are perpendicular to each other that's why the name ortho has come so that is the basic thing okay and apart from that there are many other features or conditions for orthogonal cutting okay we will see them in the next slide so for the timing you understand that cutting edge and cutting velocity are perpendicular to each other in orthogonal cutting and if you see the oblique cutting so they are not perpendicular that's it okay at some other angle so here you can see so there is some angle between the cutting edge and the cutting velocity understand other than 90 if you see here okay so that type of cutting if that is the case if the cutting edge is not perpendicular to the cutting velocity then you can call that as oblique cutting okay you observe these two figures carefully so here the first case the chip is flowing along the rake surface okay it is completely in contact with the rake surface 
and here if you see there is a certain gap between chip and the cutting tool because some portion of the chip may be touching the cutting tool definitely but okay it is not uh, completely covered here okay some portion of the chip uh, is not in contact with the rake surface and there is because of this angle here the chip will curl okay so here the the chip will be straight to some extent of course uh, it will bend like this okay you will get such kind of chip but here you will get a spiral kind of chip understand but however almost all the machining process okay are oblique orthogonal cutting is one kind of ideal situation uh, okay we cannot say that is ideal also orthogonal cutting also has uh, its own disadvantages okay but for the sake of analysis if you want to analyze the process so then orthogonal cutting is better why so it is a two dimensional if you see from this side okay depth wise there is no change understand if you go along this width of the work piece there is no change in the force okay no change in the chip uh, direction etc but here it will change okay it is 3d it is uh, 2d is enough here okay if you see uh, we can simply draw the diagram like this so this is the cutting tool let us say so with a 2d representation we can simply understand this process but here we need 3d representation and uh, you'll get uh, more okay different components of the forces okay now let us see or uh, compare these two processes orthogonal cutting and oblique cutting here you can see uh okay different uh, difference between these two processes so first orthogonal cutting so some of the examples for orthogonal cutting are parting of in lathe broaching or slotting operations so generally you are using some kind of a form tool or where you have wedge shaped tool understand just like a chisel type tool is there so those processes can be called as orthogonal cutting process now coming to oblique cutting used in almost all machining operations okay practically if you see almost all the machining operations are oblique cutting operations frequently more than one cutting edge is in action because this is in this is oblique so uh, okay we know that our cutting tool will have such in this kind of form the cutting tool uh, looks like this something like this so if this is this is primary cutting edge this is auxiliary cutting edge or this is a primary or principal cutting edge this is auxiliary cutting edge so both principal cutting edge and some portion of the auxiliary cutting edge okay will be in action during oblique cutting so here in orthogonal cutting only one cutting edge is in contact with the work piece so that is the that is one of the differences now look at the second point cutting edge clears the width of the work piece on either ends that means cutting edge length is larger compared to the width of cut or the width of work piece if you go back to the previous figure here you see from here to here okay so that is the length of the cutting edge 
but work piece length is from here to here so in those cases only orthogonal cutting is possible in general because chip is flowing along this rake surface and uh, like this if let us say tool is ending here only so from this point to this point now what happens to the remaining portion of the chip it will obviously flow okay in the backward direction and it will take some uh, okay uh, curve now so that process will no longer be orthogonal cutting so that's why this uh, second condition uh, okay is applicable to orthogonal cutting now if you see the oblique cutting cutting edge may not clear the width of the workpiece it may not okay so in the previous case it was clearing but uh, even if it is not clearing also this comes under oblique cutting a cutting edge of the tool is perpendicular to the cutting velocity vector because this is the basic first point i have told cutting edge is perpendicular to the cutting velocity a cutting edge of the tool is inclined at an angle with the normal to the cutting velocity vector okay so otherwise we can simply say that cutting velocity is not perpendicular to the cutting edge okay same thing is put in another words if you take the normal to the cutting edge let us say this is the cutting edge normal to the cutting edge is this so it is our cutting velocity direction is at some inclination to that normal so that is uh, oblique cutting now here <coughs> in uh, orthogonal cutting chip curls and flows straight up the tool and not sideways so chip is flowing along the tool surface or the rake surface of the cutting tool it is not deviating from it it is plane strain problem if you would like to analyze the process if you see from the side so it is a 2d problem so the, okay that is nothing but a plain strain problem now here in the oblique cutting chip flows sideways okay it is not exactly flowing along the rake surface of the cutting tool so it is just a curling and it is flowing in the sideways also the next point only two components of the cutting force are acting on the tool two components which are perpendicular and can be represented in a plane so during cutting let us say this is the cutting tool is like this so one horizontal force and one vertical force okay they are acting on the cutting tool so forces can be divided into okay so two vertical uh, two mutually perpendicular forces the resultant force may be in some other direction like this so okay you can uh, uh, divide that force into two mutually perpendicular components and you can analyze the process in orthogonal cutting but in oblique cutting three components of the cutting forces are acting on the cutting edge because you have to consider the other direction also then only 3d can be satisfied so which are mutually perpendicular here simply two vertical forces are there here you have to consider three components because it is three dimension now the another point is heat developed per unit area due to friction along the tool workpiece interface is high that means here if you observe i'll draw one more figure
this is how the tool is now if you observe in orthogonal cutting the chip is always in contact with the rake surface so there is continuously okay chip is rubbing against the rake surface so heat that is getting generated is high okay for that reason so here if you see the second heat developed per unit area is less because chip okay very small portion of the chip is in contact with the work piece and it is curling it is not continuously in contact okay it is varying not uh, at a particular location it is varying so there is a there is some time for cooling okay air cooling to take place or if you are using cutting fluid also it will go into that gap very easily because there is a gap between the chip and the rake surface the cutting fluid can easily go into that it can take away good amount of heat so this is the comparison between orthogonal cutting and oblique cutting so any doubt here up to this point because i was continuously speaking and is it clear orthogonal cutting oblique cutting please respond are you here yes sir okay at least if you are responding i will understand that you are listening to this okay now let us understand the types of chips we have already discussed that based on the work piece material type of the work piece or the geometry of the cutting tool or environment or the cutting fluid applications based on all those different types of chips will be formed now let us say what are those different types of chips first is discontinuous chip so discontinuous means so small chips okay broken chips otherwise or small chips you can say now continuous chip with built up edge so you, you will have a continuous chip and on that chip you will have some small uh, amount of material sticking to that chip okay, that is called built up edge okay we will have more discussion on building and built up edge in the coming slides okay now you uh, for the time being you understand that second type is continuous chip acha this is without built up edge so continuous chip there is no other material sticking to the uh, chip okay this is continuous chip without built up edge we have the another type also so that is continuous chip with built up edge here you will have continuous chip but not only continuous chip on that chip there will be some amount of material work piece material preferably or very my, minor portion of the tool material will be sticking to that chip such kind of chip is called continuous chip with built up edge now another type is serrated that is also called inhomogeneous chip so chip will be continuous but you will see uh, saw tooth type chip okay it is not completely broken so this kind of chip looks so this kind of chip on one side of the chip you will have some zigzag okay like this feature this is called a serrated chip okay and the another side it is smooth so we will see okay we will discuss all these types of chips and we will see under which conditions okay the discontinuous chip will form and the other chips now first type of chip is discontinuous chip 
so it is like this so there is this is the cutting tool this is our workpiece material and these are the types of chips very small chips okay they are getting broken and thrown away so discontinuous chips are formed because of a brittle fracture that is the reason type of a failure so two uh, work piece is generally here in, for the case of uh, discontinuous chips work piece is brittle in nature so tool is coming and uh, okay, interacting with the work piece and uh, because it is very brittle some crack will propagate okay and because of this uh, tool force coming onto the work piece so that crack will propagate and some portion of the work piece material will be broken away now let us see uh, conditions for the formation of discontinuous chip okay those conditions we'll see now so before that if you observe the chips that are formed okay they will look like this small chips okay something like this you can see there is a scale also so the length of the chips also can be roughly understood here okay about 2 cm like that so now let us have a look at the conditions for the formation of discontinuous chips first point is this brittle workpiece material so workpiece is brittle in nature i have told okay because of a brittle fracture the chip will form now low cutting speeds if the cutting speeds are low the tendency of formation of discontinuous chips is high because you are accepting if the cutting speed is low plastic deformation will be less okay tendency of plastic deformation of the workpiece material is less because the speed is less okay there is not a great amount of force coming from the cutting tool so the material ahead of the tool tip will not be compressed too much okay or compressed much so it will uh, break okay it will not be peeled off it will be breaking a large uncut chip thickness that means if you are penetrating the tool get okay, too deep into the work piece okay, then the formation of discontinuous chip chances of discontinuous chip are more understand again uh, uh, you can assign the reasons like if it is going too deep there is great amount of friction between the work piece and tool you have to see all these points independently don't combine all these points and uh, okay understand see each point separately and of course a combination of all these will definitely uh, okay form the uh, discontinuous chip only but you try to understand each point separately then you will get a better idea if you are penetrating too deep into the work piece you are trying to remove more amount of material in a single go then uh, okay it will break into small parts only understand you will not get the we are talking about the thickness of chip for uh, continuous chip it is a thin large chip okay if it is discontinuous chip it is a small chip maybe thickness can be high okay if you are trying to get more thickness you have to compensate uh, for the uh, for the length low rake angles so rake angle is less okay what is the rake angle we have understood now this is rake angle so if the rake angle is low what does it mean it is almost flat or okay very less angle is there like this so if that is the case you may get the 
discontinuous chips why because tool is not very sharp okay again you need to exert high amount of force to remove the material okay so then you will get discontinuous chips understand if it is very sharp then you can get a slice of the work piece material here you will just uh, get the chips okay thick chips thick small chips you will get lack of an effective cutting fluid okay if you are not using cutting fluid or if your cutting fluid is not effective then you may get the discontinuous chip so if uh, cutting fluid is there the chip will smoothly flow on the rake surface if cutting fluid is applied if it is not applied there is a large amount of friction so chip cannot move freely on the rake surface okay so it is now getting broken understand because of large amount of friction between the rake surface and the chip that is being formed low machine tool stiffness if the machine tool stiffness is less so what is uh, stiffness what is stiffness resistant to deformation yes deformation okay maybe we can use a better word deflection <clears throat> because deformation is slightly different resistance to deflection so it will be rigid so it is not uh, bending okay it is not bending during machining process so in that case there is a tendency of getting the discontinuous chip it is very rigid so work piece is now hitting obviously work piece is in contact with the cutting tool so let us say cutting tool is something like this so because if this is stiff tool is uh, very stiff so whatever uh, chip you are getting will be broken easily otherwise in the other case if you have more stiffness what will happen the tool will slightly bend okay and there is a chance of getting the sliced chip and lengthy chip here because it is rigid so it will not uh, bend so you will get the uh, this kind of a small chip or otherwise you can understand that uh, tool will hit the work piece at a higher uh, impact force okay because uh, it is it is stiff it is not bending so there will be more amount of uh, force when the tool is hitting the work piece it will hit it little bit hard whenever you are hitting very hard so you will get small chips you can understand that with an axe if you are trying to cut one uh, tree or a tree trunk something like that if you are applying okay some uh, heavy force with a stiff axe then you will get small uh, chips so if you are applying a continuous uh, force with very thin hacksaw then uh, okay you may not get those kind of chips you may get some uh, okay very fine powder that is different now discontinuous chip it's a disadvantage what is the disadvantage if you are getting that desert, uh, okay discontinuous chip Conti cutting force continue okay continue okay one chip is formed it is cut so okay one chip is broken it is done 
it will be broken at this location okay in general so it is done now the workpiece is again workpiece lost its contact with the tooth because the chip is broken away okay it is broken and it is falling off so again freshly the workpiece is coming in contact with the tool so once the chip is broken again the workpiece has to come into contact with the tool so the force is not continuous okay there is a fluctuating force between the cutting tool and the workpiece if the force is fluctuating obviously the tool life will decrease okay tool may break or it will easily break okay so that is one disadvantage the second point is surface finish and dimensional accuracy of the machine part are affected so it is obvious so <clears throat> let us say this is the work piece material one chip is formed okay you are uh, trying to reduce its length let us say one chip is formed it is thrown away or it is falling off now again the tool has to come in contact with this work piece and it has to remove the material so the tool tip will not go exactly to the previous location there can be some offsetting so what will happen obviously some zigzag kind of surface okay may be obtained if the cutting is happening continuously then obviously you will get a smooth surface you can understand uh, just uh, you can imagine that you are using a scissors to cut one cloth okay if your scissors is going continuously you will get uh, okay straight cut if you are stopping the scissor step by step and cutting it so then obviously you will get some uh, zigzag okay uh, shape on the edge of that cut so same thing here so this is about discontinuous chip any doubts here what are the conditions that are okay uh, helpful for the formation of discontinuous chip and what are the disadvantages if you have not understood any point you can ask and we can discuss and of course a few more conditions are there at conditions disadvantages may cause premature wear or damage to the cutting tool so i have told the tool life will come down because of varying cutting force so varying cutting force will lead to the wear of the cutting tool and it will damage the cutting tool and uh, low stiffness of the tool holder or the machine tool does allowing vibration and chatter to occur because of discontinuous chip we are getting the fluctuating forces so because of fluctuating force so vibrations will come okay what pc is intermittently hitting the cutting tool so because of that vibration is getting generated if that vibration becomes too large you will get chatter so that is dangerous once you are getting the chatter then uh, uh, there can be an accident or a failure of cutting tool and it will uh, fly off so those are the disadvantages poor surface finish tool is also okay uh, tool life is reducing finally okay those are the results of this discontinuous chip now continuous chip formation okay it is something like this tool work piece chip is continuously flowing on the rake surface of the cutting tool okay now this is here uh, is shown as primary deformation zone okay we will understand what is primary deformation zone okay uh, little bit later not in this uh, particular 
topic so after this we'll see okay uh, maybe after a few more chapters we'll uh, talk about the different zones in cutting now continuous chip looks like this okay very large chip so it is entangled or okay there is so much of a curling so it will look like this so on one side of the chip if you observe after cutting one side will be very smooth and shiny the other side okay will be little bit uh, okay off color it will be little bit dull or you can say it will be little bit black or brownish and it will not be smooth because why one side of the chip becomes very smooth any reason one side of the continuous chip is shiny the other side is not why uh, sir only one side of the chip comes in contact with cutting tool yes that's it okay one side uh, is in contact with the rake surface continuously so it will also deform also slight deformation will also be there okay of cut a chip it is plastically deformed anyhow before uh, this uh, breaking of the chip is happening so after that also there will be some secondary deformation of the chip which is in contact with the tool so that will be that will become shiny now under which conditions this uh, continuous chip okay is formed so first uh, very important thing is uh, ductile materials so continuous chip forms in case of ductile material workpiece material okay so ductile means so tool will easily go into the workpiece without a much force understand so then obviously cutting will be smooth high cutting speed cutting speed if cutting speed is very high then you will get a continuous chip okay so how can we say if it is less we have seen earlier if the cutting force is less okay there is a more amount of time interaction time between the workpiece and the cutting tool so this chip is not flowing smoothly okay or it is going very slowly and it will break but if the speed is high the chip is okay going at a faster rate very okay fast rate it is moving away from the rake surface so you'll get continuous chip high rake angle now what does it mean high rake angle means sharp cutting tool okay and you have very sharp cutting tool cutting process is smooth then we'll get continuous chip small feeds feed amount of feed that you are giving is very small so then also interaction between the cutting tool and the chip is less okay if you are getting high feed then uh, if you are giving high feed then okay very heavy interaction will be there so it should be small amount of material should be cut then it can be thin uh, okay uh, chip you, you can get a small uncut chip thickness this is also so uncut chip thickness means uh, the amount of depth okay depth of cut we are talking about depth of cut it should also be less again same reason similar to the small feed all these high speed high rake angle small feed 
small and cut cheap all these are causing low tool chip friction okay if you have high speed friction between the tool and the chip is less because dynamic friction is less than static friction so if the speed is high more dynamic action is there if the speed is less dynamic action is less so that is about speed and the rake angle i have told you if the rake angle is less or the rake angle is high the cutting will be smooth because you have a sharp cutting edge so that means less friction okay you can easily cut the material so no need of okay forcing it so less friction small feeds so you are not going too far ahead okay or you are not engaging too much of material in the single attempt and the next is small uncut chip thickness so you are not going too deep into the work piece so you are uh, removing the material from its surface okay very small amount of depth so all these will lead to small friction so small amount of friction so low tool chip friction is the reason for the formation of continuous chip sharp cutting edge again on this point is reiterated if the cutting edge is sharp it need not be rake angle if the rake angle is high cutting edge is sharp or the cutting uh, lip angle will be less so it is like this i am just exaggerating if the rake angle is high it will be like this okay very sharp so that is one thing sharp cutting edge means here if you see uh, the three dimensional figure so this edge is very sharp it is not rounded off much so then obviously cutting will be cutting action uh, will take place easily so that will also lead to the formation of continuous chip so these are the conditions under which the continuous chip is formed okay now let us see uh, merits and demerits of this continuous chip formation so this is one advantage you can say cutting under these conditions what are these conditions we have listed out the conditions is a steady state process or if the chip is continuous the process is steady state what is steady state there is uh, okay a constant force okay, flow force is not fluctuating okay that is the meaning so that is good for the tool life now this uh, the surface finish obtained is good and cutting is smooth this is obvious okay you are getting smooth surface because continuously the tool is cutting the material and there is a smooth cutting action helps in having higher tool life and a lower power consumption because there is no fluctuation in the force so impact forces or vibrating forces are not coming on the cutting tool so tool life can be more power consumption is also less because if you see if you are going very fast the amount of energy requirement will be less even if you go yeah okay it is analogous to your bike riding or vehicle riding also okay if you are going very slow the energy that is required is more if you are going at little bit higher speed overall energy consumption is less okay just one analogy i am giving okay so uh, smoothly you can cut the material so there is not much of friction between the work piece and the tool so obviously amount of uh, power consumption is less chip disposal is a problem this is one headache okay so you are getting very large chip and it is uh, okay getting curled okay in different ways 
and uh, okay you can uh, it is forming just one kind of a, a lump or a ball kind of a thing ahead of the tool so between the tool and the workpiece this chip okay is getting entangled so this will cause some problems okay what are the problems with large chip different types of problems we we'll, uh, okay we are going to see in this uh, topic only okay we'll discuss them little bit later but the problem is chip is not falling off easily collecting the chip and disposing it is a problem the chip flowing continuously over the rake face of the tool so it doesn't allow the tool to dissipate heat as a consequence the tool temperature rises this is one problem so chip is in contact with the rake surface continuously our chip surface is continuously rubbing against the rake surface of the cutting tool so lot of heat is getting generated okay and if the heat is too much or okay if it is becoming high then it will de uh, deform the cutting tool because cutting tool temperature is high so obviously when you are increasing the temperature deformation tendency of any material will increase in general so that is the problem okay so it will bend or it will deflect uh, not deflect deformation is the correct word okay so its shape will be lost so okay let us stop here it is already about 4 we'll see the remaining things in the next class stay online yeah any doubts here in today's topic you are free to ask your doubts and we can discuss okay so thank you all thank you all have a good day thank you sir. thank you sir.